it's now my pleasure to introduce my friend Frank County. I just checked with him this morning to make sure I, it was okay for me to call him Frank. <laughs> And friend, right? And friend. <laughs> um, Frank is the mayor of Des Moines, Iowa, and he is the reason why this particular banner is up uh, for this session. Uh, he is a lifetime resident of Des Moines who has a long history of civic leadership and commun community involvement. Now in his third term as mayor, um, Frank is <laughs> committed to promoting the city's goal of creating a sustainable green community for future generations. He established the Des Moines Energy and Environmental Task Force. Um, his successes include partnerships to reforest the city and receipt of a federal grant to purchase a fleet of energy efficient hybrid and hydrogen powered automobiles. Um, Mayor County has gained national recognition through his leadership roles with the U.S. Conference of Mayors. He was one of only eight U.S. mayors chosen to formulate regional environmental policies for American cities through his work with the international group local governments for sustainability. Um, he was a delegate to meetings in Copenhagen, Mexico, and Warsaw, um, where local governments uh, participated in framing for the new uh, 2015 UN Protocol on Climate. And he is one of three mayors, only three mayors, inducted into the new National Environmental Hall of Fame. Um, Mayor County uh, also joined Mayors for Peace in 2007 and has been one of our most reliable members, regularly co-sponsoring annual Mayors for Peace nuclear disarmament resolutions in the U.S. Conference of Mayors and speaking on behalf of Mayors for Peace at the U.N. And I hope he'll tell us more about the most recent uh, U.S. Conference of Mayors resolution. In 2008, Mayor County hosted a conference on nuclear weapons, nuclear power, and climate change in Des Moines, organized by Western States Legal Foundation and Lawyers Committee on Nuclear Policy and local groups. We're two of the groups, of course, hosting this panel. So again, it's my great pleasure to introduce Mayor Frank County of Des Moines. I want to thank everybody for being here. It, uh, to look out and uh, I, I will also tell you as I, as I think about it and I listen to the first uh, uh, panel and I thought, I don't want to say anything I was going to say because I'm talking to everybody that knows everything that uh, we want to talk about here and uh, are experts in the field. And so uh, thank you for all the work that you do in the field and to put together the science and the support and the factual information that helps those of us uh, at the local level, at the national level, uh, kind of articulate a, a position that uh, we can um, uh, sort of beg off on being the, the owners and the creators of facts, but we can present them and, and hope that people receive them. So keep up your work, keep working at it. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what mayors do out there. And uh, it, it's, as Jackie said earlier, uh, I've been involved in, in a lot of things as, as I think of back uh, over the years. Uh, there's a lot of people that, that take office and for whatever reason, uh, whether I serve sort of in a nonpartisan way, uh, I, I serve Democrats and Republicans and probably no parties and a few communists and socialists, but I never asked a one of them when they called and needed help what party they were in. Uh, that doesn't affect us. We serve people every single day and it doesn't make any difference whether they're men or they're women or they're young or they're old. Uh, it, we, that's what we do. So, it's, it's interesting. I, I do have uh, a lot of good friends uh, out there that, um, I say that tongue in cheek, uh, as I have stood up not only for climate change, but also uh, illegal guns and background checks and things like that. So I uh, will tell you that I probably won't get any campaign contributions from the NRA. Uh, but it, 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 it talks about safety to me. It talks about the future of our cities. It talks about how we protect our people. And uh, in local government, uh, you know, Safety and quality of life are paramount. That's what they look to us for, and uh, not whether there, you know, there's a partisan interest one way or the other on it. It's how do we make that happen and how we get it done, and what resources do we use to make that happen, and what are some of the things that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. 
to do that. You know, we look at violence, we look at fire, we look at disasters. And in our city, we've identified 27 different types of disasters that could take place in the heart of America, uh, in Des Moines, Iowa. And uh, the one that seems to make the newspaper the most is our floods. Uh, we're getting to be real experts on floods. And uh, it, it, so people come to us and, and talk to us about our preparedness and our, our mitigation plan and our response and our recovery and, and what resources do we have and capacity do we have to respond to those kinds of things. And so we have you know, put together a, a plan and uh, um, done a lot of internal work. Uh, at the same time, you've got a whole bunch of citizens out there. We've got about in our, our metro area, our MSA, if you will, there's five, 600,000 people in the city of Des Moines. We're about 210, specifically. Uh, but we're, we're the heart of Iowa, the capital city. And so people look at us to uh, lead and, and do certain things. And I will tell you that at other levels of government, we're, we're seeing less and less support for the work that we have to do. And so, I, whether it's state government or it's federal government, we're fighting for dollars and, and there's all kinds of arguments going up, up, uh, up the ladder and, and going on in, in Washington. And, and I will say uh, this sort of is a, is a little side comment. I was asked this last year. We have a number of uh, open seats, whether it's the U.S. Senate or, or U.S. Congress, or uh, they were looking for somebody to, to run for governor for a minute. And, I thought about certainly the, the first of all the, the two going to Washington and I work a lot with those folks that are in there. I go in and I lobby them and I tell them about a lot of the things that have to be done that we've talked about here this morning. But you know what, at the, at the end of the day, it almost seems like they don't get much done. Because the right saying one thing, the left saying one thing, the Democrats, Republicans, whatever it is, and so they're in they're locked down. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing, they do seem to, to uh, uh, finance, and it seems to be war. And that bothers me because there's so much need uh, that we've talked about here today and talked about in, in all kinds of hunger, homeless uh, conversations, whether it's in the United States, Des Moines, Iowa, around the world. These are issues that localities have to deal with in our places and figure out what we're doing. Uh, but it's interesting, by the way, as we look back through the history of the United States and say, you know, war's not very popular. Uh, people don't like the idea, especially if they've experienced it, whether uh, it's World War II, it's uh, the Korean conflict, it's Vietnam, it's everything that's happened, uh, you know, in the Middle East since then, uh, in, in police actions or whatever it is that we call some of these things. And, and don't you find it sort of interesting? They must have looked at it as they were doing budget conversations and they said, uh, you know, it's really hard to sell and get people to vote for candidates that support war. So why don't we change the name of the department from the War Department to the Defense Department? Now all of a sudden everybody says, oh, we got to have defense. And so all of a sudden now we're talking about a billion and billions of dollars, not only for the war machine itself, but also for nuclear weapons. That uh, I think, as um, Joseph said earlier, you know, we talked about the U.S. Uh, using nuclear weapons to dominate the world. And quite frankly, at least in part, I, I uh, agree with our our president uh, when he said uh, that uh, you know, just because you have the biggest hammer doesn't make every problem a nail. And I agree with that. So let's show some evidence of that and, and let's quit making uh, hammers. So it affects all of us. I have uh, participated uh, um, in international discussions around climate change, uh, starting in Copenhagen internationally and certainly in the United States in the Conference of Mayors before and with uh, ICLEI. Uh, our International Council of Local Environmental Initiatives, and we do, we're doing all kinds of stuff in Des Moines that we think is great and, and we're going to save at least our part of the world. But as you look at it and you discover that, that there's our little part of the world and everything that we do uh, certainly is, demonstrates a possibility uh, of, of what needs to be done, what could be done, what should be done. But we've got to sell that every place across this country. 
and across this continent and across this globe to be able to understand what it is that we're doing. And I will, uh, uh, by the way, quickly uh, uh, thank uh, Tony uh, for the work that they've done in, in, uh, in reference just to cover the ground uh, here, uh, Jackie. Uh, the resolution that we introduced, by the way, the US, U.S. Conference of Mayors, uh, calls for the constructive good faith U.S. Uh, participation in good faith, I think should be underlined, as uh, John mentioned a minute ago, what does that mean? Uh, in international nuclear disarmament forums. That's the title of it. Uh, and specifically, one of our whereas is, is uh, whereas the people of the Republic of the Marshall Islands continue to suffer from the health and the environmental impacts of 67 above ground <coughs> nuclear weapon tests explosions conducted by the United States uh, in their islands between 1946 and 58, the equivalent of 1.6. Hiroshima-sized bombs detonated daily for 12 years. Uh, whereas the RMI on April 24, 2014 filed a uh, landmark case in the ICJ against the U.S. and eight other nuclear-armed nations claiming that they have failed to comply with their obligations under the NPT and customary international law to pursue negotiations for the worldwide elimination of nuclear weapons and filed a companion case in the U.S. federal court. Uh, so thank you for your work. Let's give him another great big hand for it. Uh, and I also thank all my fellow mayors. Interestingly enough, this passed unanimously, uh, the conference mayor. Now, as you can tell, by the way, it's a fairly lengthy document. I'm not sure every one of them read every <laughs> piece of it. But uh, I, I, I think that their intent is in the right place and their hearts are in the right place. Um, so where do we go? What is it that we're going to do to um, try to educate the rest of the world on what needs to be done? Because I don't need to educate anybody in this room. But I think we need strategies as to how it is that we're going to address these issues, whether it be climate or war or nuclear pro proliferation, or the effort to do the opposite. Uh, how is it that we get that message out? And it's interesting to me as we talk about educating and informing our local citizens, because that's what, what we can do. And by the way, back to the, the other thing, I decided not to run for any of those offices for the reason that they're not getting anything done. I can get something done in Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah. I can go out and talk to mayors around the world and we, we have a nice conversation around the table and it doesn't involve politics and partisanship. It involves helping our people and getting things done and looking at the future, not only for ourselves, but our kids and our grandkids and our great-grandkids. I like that discussion. I don't like not getting stuff done. And it doesn't make any difference how much I get paid or anything else. What matters is that we're making a difference uh, today and for future gener generations. But as I thought about it, and, and we look at it, and I know I've had these discussions with others uh, regarding climate and greening America's schools and greening schools around the world and greening our education process, and you think, how in K through 12, how is it that we do it? There's been some initiatives that would say, well, let's just do it. Let's, let's teach an environmental class. Everybody ought to take an environmental class. I say, no, let's, we can do that. But they ought to insert it in every single subject that's in there. There ought to be an English literature. It ought to be in history. Oh, let's talk about the industrial age. And we started using a whole lot of coal. What was the impact of that? Let's do it in math and science. Let's talk about the calculations and what the correlation is and the relationship is between the increase in carbon, the increase in, in the volatility of, of climate on, the, on this planet. Let's put it in every subject, K through 12, and then Let's emphasize what needs to happen at higher education sources, whether it's at uh, undergraduate degrees or it's at graduate degrees, and let's also figure out how we educate what we hope to be lifelong learners. People are listening to stuff, and a lot of people think they're getting educated by listening to a variety of media out there. And so um, I, I try to listen to all media. There's some that I, I get so sick that I shut it off pretty quick. But 
it's interesting to uh, listen to a perspective, you know, on one side that seems to be MSNBC that, you know, seems to talk about facts a lot, and CNN that does some of the same, and then Fox that talks right. about opinions a lot. And so, you know, when the discussion of, of climate change gets reduced to uh, an economic discussion, all of a sudden we're, we're off point. It, it's sort of, wait a minute, what are we talking about? We're talking about climate over here. Shouldn't we be able to connect uh, a green plan to the future economy of the United States and the, and the world and, and how it is that we do those sorts of things? But sometimes the, the, the discussion gets so totally diverted, we can't even have a discussion about the issues that really uh, mean something to us and, and make a difference. So I think that somehow our educated public has to let not only the media, but those elected officials, those ones that do tend to be somewhat partisan, uh, know what, what's going to make a difference. This is important to me. And it's not just the people in, the, in this room. Somehow we've got to get a groundswell of support, not just the protesters that are, that are getting uh, uh, arrested and put in jail uh, periodically, but uh, let's, let's see what we can do out there to get uh, folks to understand. And I've got to tell you, some of the easiest ones are the, the K through 6th grade, 8th grade. They learn really quick, and you give them facts, and, and they take them home. Uh, I remember in my generation when Ronald McDonald was telling us that we ought to go get a Big Mac and a French fries in a mall uh, at least once or twice a week, and uh, we transferred that conversation to our parents. Why aren't we stopping at McDonald's and getting a you know Big Mac, French fries in a mall? It sounds really good. And you know what? McDonald's grew like crazy, and they kind of crushed everybody else. I mean, remember Henry's hamburgers? Where are they now? They didn't have Ronald McDonald. But you know what? Ronald McDonald is not so visible anymore, which I find interesting. Uh, that uh, there was a time, let's say about a decade ago, when Ronald McDonald was the most visible person in silhouette, at least in the United States, if not the world. He was uh, more visible and, and people knew who it was more quickly than, than, than Jesus and Santa Claus. <laughs> that blows my mind. <laughs> but it was. Somehow we have to raise the awareness of the connectivity of the future of this planet and climate and peace and nuclear. And I'm... Uh, I've been reading one of my good friends on, on climate change and that I've talked to a number of times through the years, Dr. James Hansen. I agree with him on about 90% of everything that he says. I am not so much in agreement and I'm not the scientific expert here, but I appreciate some of the words that have been said earlier this morning when they talked about nuclear not being an option. So let's, no carbon, no nuclear, let's look at renewables, let's figure out how we're going to do it. You know, and as we think about uh, uh, the future, and, and um, Andrew earlier said that, uh, you know, war makes states. And uh, while well, we've changed the name of it, now it's defense. Uh, it gives purpose in a, in a way to grab funds to, to do certain things and, and keep the national government at a level. Uh, but I want you to know that cities and localities, uh, peace and quality of life make cities. And if you think that a nuclear bomb over Hiroshima and Nagasaki didn't change the quality of life in those places, you're mistaken. So let me quickly just uh, close and say I'd love to talk to any of you at any time. Uh, let's be partners. Let's try to get a word out. And uh, as I think about philosophy, a lot of my philosophy uh, through the years, given the age that I grew up with, came from rock and roll. <laughs> so, as, as I think about uh, uh, the future and the serious discussions that we're having, whether it be climate or whether it be about peace and war, I think of a, a, a quote that, let us not speak falsely now, for the hour is getting late. <laughs>
Isn't he great? Another round for Mayor County. So let me just uh, mention one of the hats I wear, and the reason that I know Frank is uh, that I'm the North American Coordinator of Mayors for Peace, which now has well over 6,000 members internationally in 158 countries. U.S. We now have, I believe, 203 members, um, and just in the last month, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Cincinnati, Ohio, and Atlantic City, New Jersey have joined. Uh, we have so far been unsuccessful in enticing Mayor de Blasio to join, uh, so I'd like to invite you New Yorkers to help with that, and if you're not from New York, please enroll your mayor. It has the potential to be a very powerful, it already is a powerful organization. It could be more powerful in the United States. So.